Um, so I want to begin by asking you, this is a fantastic cast for yeah. this film. Tell me about working with everyone, with Jim and James, and tell me about just like, was that what attracted you to the project, was when you saw this, this cast? Absolutely. There were two elements, obviously, Jim Caviezel. I had been a fan of his for a really long time, and I think when you pursue the arts, there were people that inspired you to do so. And when you get a chance to work with some of them, because somehow they've inspired you or triggered something in you that you feel is, you know, the top shelf of that type of art, you know, that was how I felt about Jim Caviezel when I saw him in A Thin Red Line and, and everything thereafter. And so to work with him was nerve-wracking and exciting. <laughs> and I'll never forget when he came into the first rehearsal and I was completely, like, <laughs> tongue-tied. And But the first scene that we shot was the scene outside of the car um, where I discover the money and we get in this huge fight. And I had to be so, you know, open and have this long history with him. And... He was not disappointing in the least. He was so present and so generous as an actor and was willing to rehearse. And I think that is a great scene. And um, also Joel Silver, that component was really meaningful to work with, I think, the best action producer in the history yeah. of action films and the films that I loved growing up watching, you know, to be able to be a part of a, a franchise that he was, you know, shepherding was... I felt a dream come true. So there were there were two two major elements to my wanting to do this film. But also, you know, I haven't done a lot of action, so it was an opportunity for me to grow and pursue a genre that I feel like I would be very good at and um, you know, being that I'm athletic and into sports and work out every day and you know, I felt like I felt like I had natural abilities that had not yet been explored mm. by not doing my own stunts and projects because I really haven't done action. So in this particular film, I do the majority of my stunts. And there was a real physical element to the film that was really challenging because we were in Louisiana in the summer. We were in an alligator bayou preserve, so there were real alligators wow. there. Nothing was CGI'd. I mean, there was a little bit CGI'd, but for the most part, we were either out on the streets doing these action sequences where cars were really exploding, or we were in the alligator bayou preserve with alligators that were 14 feet long that, you know, were terrifying and prehistoric looking, and, you know, and there were wranglers there handling them, but they were handling them with, like, sticks and like raw chicken. So it wasn't, uh, you know, uh, there was nothing glamorous about it and right. you needed to get down and dirty and you needed to do your own stunts. And you needed to be brave and I think that that element of wanting to be brave is what really drew me to it. Yeah, and then when, when you heard about the whole like After Dark action series and sort of putting transit with other like action films, what was sort of your reaction to that? I'm not a marketer, so, you know, for me, all I want is for people to see this film, and if this is the way that we can get them to come see it by, you know, partnering it with other films in the same genre for fans that really love this kind of movie, and now they know where to go and get it, and they know how to see it because there's a comprehensive marketing scheme behind mm -hmm. it, then I'm for it. And yeah. I think that movies have changed a lot in the last 10 years. I think that you know, this type of film is uh, unusual to have an action film that's really gritty and old school in that way where, you know, people are really getting into the fights that they're getting into and the stunts that are happening are, are happening live action in front of you and there aren't rigs and things like that, you know, people, f you know, Green flying off buildings. CGI, yeah, I mean, yeah. this is like a grittier, you know, car chase you know, fist fighting. Almost like a 70s scenes. or 80s action film. It feels film, like a yeah. 70s or 80s film. And so in that sense, I feel like, um, I feel like these films fit one another. And for those fans, they're going to, they're going to know where to find what they love. And that is all that I care about. Yeah. Yeah. Having audience be able to see the film and yeah. enjoy it. You don't yeah. want to do things that disappear and don't, don't feed, yeah. you know, the, the viewers that want to see this kind of project. So I'm glad that, you know, it's a part of a comprehensive group of films and, you know, they're being helmed by, you know, great producers like Joel Silver. So, um, and Courtney Solomon and, so I, I just feel like I think the audience will be very pleased with uh, you know for those that love action they'll they'll get their money's worth definitely definitely well tell me a little bit about Robin um, and and her relationship with uh, Jim's character from what uh, Nate from what I could see in the trailer it seems like 
just from the beginning, there's some sort of mistrust between them. Is there something from his past that she's not sure about? Because she, she all, all, all of a sudden thinks, where did this money come from? What's going on? What, what, what's sort of the relationship there? Well, let me just dial it back to say that once um, a person said to me that all great relationships have baggage. And I think the funny thing is, is we're looking for relationships that don't have baggage, but the more time you spend with somebody, the more you know what you go through together right, right. and it's how you survive your baggage and how you find each other again after you've been through something really tough now there are extreme situations like this film and this is a broken relationship by you know all you know sort of terms of what you know a relationship would be described as being over or you know not having an ability to trust one another he's gone to prison he's left her for a couple of years and she's raised these kids on her own and she feels betrayed and abandoned and you know basically I feel like is 100% done and is just going through the motions of this mm -hmm. family trip for the kids and less for herself but I do think she's really you know she really loves him. I think she was in love with him at one point, and there is this desire um, on his part to have everything work out. So there's a hope, but when in the very beginning there's this event that takes place that is questionable, you know, there's no hope in her mind. She mm -hmm. just wants to take care of her children and move on. But what I like is that it it explores it explores people overcoming their obstacles period end of story i think that her as a mother she ends up you know overcoming her obstacle of you know just being becky home becky and really showing her survivor and her and her hero and becoming strong and taking care of her family and forgiving i think forgiving takes incredible bravery and incredible strength and she forgives him you know, because they go through this extraordinary experience together. And ultimately, I mean, that is what life is about, is finding each other again and, um, you know, overcoming the obstacles that are put in front of you. I mean, people, you know, make mistakes and, you know, and if you love each other, you find your way back. And I don't think that anybody has life, you know, without error, so. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. And then um, you talked about... Uh um, some of the stunts and stuff. Tell me about the physicality about what you had to do for this film. Was there a lot of running and kind of pushing around and stuff like that uh, that you had to do? Was that how was that for you? Well, there was a lot of like you know knee deep in these swamps where yeah. there were real alligators and snakes. Then there were fighting sequences, and every actor is different. You know, if I were to do a scene with James Frain. It would be like I could never feel him touching a hair on my head. I had to sell all of the mm. movements because he he is very strict about never wanting to harm anybody, and he has very clear boundaries. And we it was like dancing. We were like dancing together. And then you know other actors. You know you say I want that feeling. I want you know don't be afraid. Just go for it. You know let's get into it. You know, and that I'm more like that. So, you know, sometimes I would do scenes with other actors and it would be a little bit rougher. So you would have that real reaction. Mm. So I think, you know, with um, all the different actors in it, you know, you sold different things. I mean, James threw me around that room and he didn't harm a hair on my head. So it was really just me selling it. And I think if you're strong enough and you're fit and you, you know, some actors do extensive training for a film or some actors are always in shape and they're, you know, they're ready for it. Right, but I yeah. think, you know, like, um, you know, other actresses who've done action, you know, I want to do the stunts. I enjoy them. I enjoy the challenge. I think it looks better. It looks real. It is real. And, you know, then there's some, you know, parts of a scene that perhaps, you know, are safer if a stunt person does it, but they're few and far between because... I think it, it, it grounds you in the work, and it's fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, James Frank plays a great villain. And w w yeah. what was it like working with him on the set? Did he just eating up the scenery? Was it just chewing it up? I loved watching him work. Every, every time you work with an actor, it's so interesting to see their different technique and how they approach work. And he is incredible to watch. I love him as a person. We, we all became really good friends. I think it was a 20-day shoot in extreme environment. Uh, it was very, very hot. It was the middle of the summer in Louisiana. We were in an alligator preserve. We had, you know, action. We had cars blowing up. It wasn't like, you know, we were in some studio in L.A. And it was a really rough shoot. And it brought us all 
together and made us all close and we're all friends to this day so I think it was a great experience. Fun. Uh, what's next for you? What can we see you in next? Well I'm doing the client list on Lifetime and we just found out we were picked up today for 15 more shows so that's okay. exciting. But we have the majority, you know, of the season still yet to air, or at least half of it, because we did ten shows for the first season. And Jennifer Love Hewitt is amazing, and Sybil Shepherd is amazing. I love working with both of them. And Loretta Devine, and it's just a great cast of women. And you'll be back next season. And I'll be back next oh, season. And, yeah, so that's really on deck, and that's really, you know, a lot of what's been going on. And, um, I don't know, I'm writing a book about... Um, Parenthood, actually, and that's going to come out in May of next year. So I'm, okay. um, you know, busy. Okay. You know, yeah. a lot, lot of stuff going yeah. on. Well